Hey everyone, today I want to compare three different beauty sponges for you that are out in the market that are very popular or have been talked about here in the YouTube community and many have been labeled as beauty blender dupes. So I want to talk about my experience with them, how they functioned for me, how they compare in different areas, as well as if I only had to pick one in the very end, which one I would go with and just kind of some overall thoughts. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one that I'm talking about is the Sephora Beauty Blender Sponge. This retails for $19.95 for one of them. You can find them online, definitely, and also in some select stores, I believe, in the little to-go section in the middle. So $19.95 for this one at Sephora, um, CameraReadyCosmetics.com, and Beauty.com as well. The next one is from the brand Soho. You can find this one at Walgreens, and if anyone else knows where you can find this brand of sponge, if you would just please let the other viewers know down below in the comment section. Otherwise, I know for sure at Walgreens, and it does retail for $7.99. And this is what that one looks like. The next one is from the brand Revive, and you're supposed to be able to find these at TJ Maxx. Unfortunately, my store did not carry this and they still do not have it. Every single time I go, I always check and they never have them in stock. So I was able to get this one through my friend Kristen from Miss Kristen321. So thank you, Kristen, for being so sweet and sending me this. So this is what it looks like. And I believe this retails for about $5.99 or $6.99. I want to say it wasn't any more than that. But uh, this is what that one looks like. And again, you can check your local TJ Maxx for that. Okay, so now let's talk about how to use these beauty blending sponges and what they're meant to be used with. The way that you use them is they're designed to be used wet. So basically what you do is you just turn your water on, you run them under the water and just squeeze out all of the excess water. Now I have heard some people say that they, after running it several times and squeezing the water out, that they also wrap a paper towel around it and then squeeze out the excess like that as well. I don't do that, but you're more than welcome to if you want to try that. But basically just running it underwater and then just squeezing out all the excess. And you will notice that all of the beauty sponges will increase in size. So they're going to get a little bit bigger than they are in their original dry state. Okay, now what products to use with the beauty sponges? They are supposed to be designed for liquid foundation, cream foundation, compact pressed powder foundation, loose powder, and there is one other one that I cannot remember off the top of my head, but basically five different types of foundation is what you're supposed to be able to use these with. Now, I haven't tried it with loose powder foundation because I just don't I don't know. I haven't tried it, but I don't think I would like this for loose powder. I prefer to use my brush for that just because it grabs all the product and I can like buff it into my skin. But if it's something that you're interested in, you can definitely try that. I have only used this with cream foundation, uh, liquid foundation, and a pressed powder foundation. So I'm going to share my experience with that. Now these are designed to, because their sponges last about three to four months, or it's recommended that you replace them every three to four months. And because some are more porous than the others, some are easy, are more easily cracked, I guess. So you can tell kind of with the beauty blender, you can see like some of the lines and some of the cracking that happened after the first time that I used it. So there it is right there. You can just starting, you can start to see some of the cracks there. Now with something like the Revive, it's not so porous, but you can see that it also has a little bit of wear and tear as well. So there it is right there. These are very easy to clean. I have used both my uh, baby shampoo, I've used my Dawn soap. You can use your master's cleaner. They also sell different cleaners for them as well. They have a Beauty Blender Solid Balm that they sell online at Sephora, and they also have a liquid. So if you're really weird about using like a Dawn liquid soap or anything like that, then you can always use the Beauty Blender brand of cleanser to clean your sponges. And you don't have to just use it with a Beauty Blender, you can use it on any sponge that you have. Let's compare the density of the three sponges because they are very different. The Beauty Blender is definitely the least dense. It's very, very spongy and airy, even dry, so it's very different from the other two. The Soho is a little bit more dense. It's not as light and airy as the Beauty Blender, as you may or may not be able to tell, but it does have a little bit more density, although not as much density as the Revive. This one is very, very different. It's definitely not like the other two, and it's just more of like a foam, a little bit of a harder consistency to squeeze even when it's wet. So they're very, very different as far as density goes. And as far as coverage goes, I feel like with the Beauty Blender, I definitely find myself using more foundation with this. And I feel like the first coverage of foundation is very sheer. So it's a very light coverage foundation. 
the second one, the Soho, I really like this. It's still a light to medium coverage, but it's buildable. I don't feel like you get a true full coverage finish like you would with a brush, but it still gives more coverage to me, in my opinion, than the Beauty Blender. As far as the Revive goes, this one I don't feel like blends into your skin very well. I feel like it kind of just like stamps it in and just kind of sits on your skin. I don't feel like it goes in very well. But I do have to say that I have used all three of them for pressed powder foundation as well. And my favorites for that are the Soho and the Revive. This one in particular is my favorite for my Estee Lauder double wear compact foundation. I just love it. It just goes really, really well onto my face when I press it in and just very easy to use. So I love this one for pressed powder foundation. I love this one for both, but more so for liquid foundation. And the Beauty Blender has unfortunately not been one of my favorites. So I don't know, it's okay for, for a light coverage foundation on me, but I haven't found that I'm getting a full coverage with this. And I have used many different foundations from drugstore to high end, from light coverage to full coverage, and just nothing is doing it for me and the Beauty Blender. As far as how to use these sponges, it's really easy. After you run it under the water and squeeze out all the excess, you basically just kind of stipple it onto your face. You can also use a rolling motion if you wanted to, for uh, liquid foundation, I would recommend just kind of stippling it, but definitely not going up and down kind of like in a streaky form like this because it's not, it's not meant to be used like that. Just kind of bounce it onto your skin like this, or again, just use the rolling motion. Now for pressed powder foundation, I do find that the rolling motion works much, much better. Even if I use a liquid foundation and then a pressed powder foundation on top to kind of set it, I love using this and then just kind of rolling it onto my skin it almost gives a near perfect there was something flying it almost gives a near perfect flawless finish on my face so okay so overall uh for me personally i'm not the biggest fan of the beauty blender i want to love it because i know so many people love it and it works well for so many people so i am definitely not dogging this beauty blender sponge i think you really just need to try it for you with your choice of foundation and see if it's something for you um, because i know so many people love it and it received many good ratings on the sephora website and here on youtube so many people talk about it so for me personally i'm not loving it just yet maybe when i find that this works better with a different foundation or a different method or something that i'm not figuring out there's got to be something that i'm missing because i just don't love it like everybody else does but definitely try it for yourself the Soho Beauty Sponge, I love this one for liquid foundation. I love it for concealer. I love it for pressed foundation. And it's very, very affordable. And I also like that it has two pointed ends. So what I do is I usually use one for foundation and then I use the other one for concealer. So love this one. And then again, the Revive, I don't particularly favor it for liquid foundation, but I do love it for pressed foundation. And honestly, like this would be my go-to for pressed foundation. Overall, though, if I had to pick one, I would go with the Soho. And if I had a choice between the Soho Beauty Sponge or a foundation brush, I would still go with a foundation brush. I love my Sigma F80 Flat Top Kabuki for foundation application. It really gives me the fuller coverage that I want. It's so easy to use and so easy to blend my foundation. So over all three sponges, I would still choose my Sigma brush and it's just, it works. And I feel like that would last a lot longer than a sponge because I don't know if, you know, these are, these can still harbor bacteria, even though you're cleaning them out, you know, because they're a sponge, who knows, right? But I feel like with a brush, just, I think it's just a mental thing. I feel like it's getting a lot cleaner and more thorough of a cleaning than a sponge. But these are still great. I think, again, it's just a preference of what you prefer, a sponge or a brush, and just kind of try it out for yourself and determine which one is for you. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions that maybe I didn't cover or if anything was unclear, please leave them down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I thank you so much for watching. Have a great day or night and I will see you in the very next video. Bye.